Hey guys, my name is Keen Clark, and I'm going to walk you through styling a simple Sentry Touch app using a powerful tool called SAS. So here's the app that I've built. It's just a, a very simple little town guide app that I've been playing around with a little while. And you can see that the app is styled using the default Sentry Touch style sheet with a kind of a navy-like color. But what's important to note is that this entire application can be restyled using a different base color, and all of the other gradients, all of the other colors in the app will adjust accordingly. The gradient is calculated automatically, this slightly lighter active color is calculated automatically, and the entire app will revolve around this one base color. So SAS is a really powerful tool which allows me to just specify a base color here in the style sheet. So what is SAS? Well, it's a, it's a compiled style sheet, and a lot of people have pretty strong opinions about compiled languages lately with CoffeeScript emerging, and also SAS, which is a way of using advanced variables um, and tools like Lighten, Darken, to compile CSS. Um, so a lot of people don't like compiled CSS, uh, me included, to be honest, uh, because it tends to kind of impede upon your workflow um, and slow down the time it takes to write, to write an app. Um, but I find that it's pretty good for just defining a default Sentry Touch style sheet, um, and maybe even it's something that you can work into your own workflow. So first thing we're going to do is change into the directory where the Sentry Touch SAS files live. So I'm working off of the default model view controller boilerplate template that Sentry give us, and I'm going to change directory into lib touch res resources and SAS. And if you look in here, you can see that there is a Sentry Touch.scss file, and that's what we're going to be compiling. So first things first, you need to actually install SAS. I already have it installed, but the command is gem install compass, and I recommend you use the beta version, so we're going to pass in the minus pre flag. Um, and of course, since this is a gem command, there is a reliance on Ruby. Um, so I have compass installed, which means I can simply type compass, and you get a description of the command. So I'm going to do compass compile sentia-touch.scss and we'll see a few warnings but they're not actually to be worried about um, and it's telling me that the style sheet I've just compiled is identical because I haven't made any changes. So I'm going to jump into Eclipse and this is the sentia-touch.scss file that we're editing and I'm going to define a base color. Um, so the variable name is base-color and let's make it black. So at the moment base color is navy, it probably looks a little something like 1, 2, 3, 66 maybe, something in and around this. It's a, a kind of a dark navy default center color. We're going to make it black, 333. And I'm going to run the compile command. It's telling me that it's overwritten the style sheet, and when I refresh the app, <coughs> You can see that the app is now a nice deep black color. Let's try another color. So I'm going to tell the app to become red. Run the compiler again. and you see the entire app has turned red. Um, but I can also combine variables. So if I go back into the style sheet, here I'm applying a base color. I'm also going to apply an active color. And let's make the active color red and the base color that kind of dark blackish gray that we have. I'm going to run the compiler again. Telling me I've got a syntax error. I think it expects six digits. Three or six digits, okay. And if you refresh the app, there we go. So we see the active color is red, and the main color, the base color, is the black that we defined. So you can see the active color here on the little highlights. Likewise, I guess if I click on these guys, you can see that they turn black. Or sorry, they turn red as I click them. So let's throw in another color, just to show how much the app can change by using something a little bit different. And I've got to go with something I've got here, 7A1E08. This is a kind of a rustish color. And let's make the active color 21 ed Kind of a shocking pink, I think that is. Run the compiler. And 
and you see the entire application has been transformed into something pretty crazy looking. Um, so you can see in here somewhere is that rust color, but it's actually automatically calculated a gradient based around that. Uh, and likewise, you can see the active color is a slightly washed out kind of a blue. And when I click on these list items, their highlighted state is also that kind of blue color. So a really powerful tool. Uh, let's add in a few more variables. So I've added a base color and an active color. Now I'm also going to define what color the tabs are going to be. So tabs dash dark. And I'm going to make the dark tabs to be Let's make these gray. Let's make our base color this guy. And let's give our active color the red. So this is red. This is blue. And this is dark gray. <coughs> Again, I'm going to refresh the app. And there we go. So we see the bottom here. We see the little red, the gray, and also the base color being blue. Um, so what I'm going to do now is define a custom UI. So you'll see the code for the app here. It's really quite simple. And I'm going to jump down to some toolbars that I defined. So here's the top toolbar at a glance. But I want to make these bottom toolbars a tiny bit smaller. So I'm going to give this one a UI of and I'm going to give this one the same UI again. <clears throat> so you can see that it's tried to apply a custom UI, but there's no background color defined. Um, and also I've applied a tiny bit of CSS to say the text gets a little bit smaller and it's aligned left. But if I combine this with a little bit of code in SAS, I find where the two bars are included, I can now also include my custom UI. So I'm going to tell the color to be again dark gray and I'm going to call the UI black as you saw in home. And of course we need to run the compile again. And there we go. So the UI has been applied, and they now have a nice black background. So all of the uh, properties that I've been applying can be seen here in the API docs. So if I look up, for example, a list item, down here at the very bottom, you'll see all of the SAS variables being defined. So the active color of the list, the active gradient. If you've got a grouped list, what color those headings are going to be, this guy here. Um, so entirely customizable. Every component has a huge list of these um, SAS styles. Um, so check them out in the API docs. And thanks for listening.